Before I share with you some of the videos about using some plants from your garden, here's a more detailed look around the garden. It's called the Lost Garden of Pontefract because we live in just an ordinary terraced house on the edge of town. Um, but the garden itself is approximately a quarter of an acre in size. And in it, I like to grow just about anything and everything. So these are banana plants. Uh, I have to keep them inside over the winter, um, but they've just gone outside, so looking a little bit tatty as the, the sunlight and the wind uh, can affect the leaves a bit. As we walk through the first part of the garden, it's a flower garden. Um, different themes for each of the borders. And we're now entering the herb garden section, which we go through an arch with a Kiftsgate rose going over it. That should be in a flower in a month or so's time. Here, in the herb garden, all of these plants have a use of some sort, either because they're edible, uh, they might be used in the dyeing process, brewing, um, or even medicinally. They're laid out in three main beds, and every single plant in this part of the garden is useful in some way. Um, from things like the crocosmia on the left, for which the flowers can be used in salads, through to the arnica we're now passing, which is used to treat bruises. And we're now going into the heart of the growing area, which is the greenhouse. And here we have all kinds of plants grown from seed, including passion fruit grown from seed collected from one from the supermarket. This is a cotton plant, or a group of cotton plants. There's basil just off to the left. We also have cucumbers, tomatoes, squash, pumpkins, more tomatoes. And then outside we have the hardening off area at the back there. Um, there is wasabi, and the front we're looking at now are loofah plants, which are grown to make a back scrubbers for when you're having a bath or a shower. The nets are on because we do have a bit of a problem with pigeons. You'll see we've got other nets elsewhere in the garden. But herbs can be pretty too. That's digitalis, which is used medicinally to treat the heart. And these are bearded iris. Um, the ground up dried root of the iris is used as a flavouring in gin. A loquat tree, not often seen in this country, but grows all over Europe and produces small um, orange fruit. This is a hosta, which you might be more familiar with. The leaves of the hosta, the fresh shoots, can be used in salads. And the pink flowers there are the indigo plant. The dye doesn't actually come from the flowers, but comes from the boiled up leaves. The silvery plant here is Alecost, which is a medieval herb used in the brewing to make the flavour of medieval beers. And the lilac-y flowers we just passed are from a wild form of lettuce. This is a kiwi, planted this year actually, although we do have others elsewhere in the garden. And there are a great many fruit trees grown as cordons around the lawn area. This is an apple called Blue Moon, because although it's still red technically, the fruit when ripe have a blue sheen to them. Here we have another blue fruited apple tree. And this is a mulberry. This is a variety called Charlotte Russe, which flowers when the plant is still young. We only started the garden in September 2017, and most of the work in 2017 was clearing the ground. The first plants didn't go in till December. We have cardoons, strawberries, coming up we also have garlic, onions, and grown in the middle of them, in the caterpillar as my daughter calls it, are carrots, which we have a bit of a problem with carrot fly. Here we have part of our edible hedge, as we call it. This first plant is a camellia. It's the camellia that is used to produce tea from. A 
a pomegranate tree. And coming up past all the calendulas, which are also a herb, we have Sichuan pepper, also in the edible hedge, but completely covered at the moment by the calendula, is a hardy type of orange. It's a ponsiris tree. But it does actually produce oranges and should do in this country when it gets a bit bigger. As you've already seen, if it's unusual and not to be expected, I'd quite like to give it a go growing it. Along the top of the garden and down the eastern side are two walls. They're approximately eight foot tall in places and we've trained various fruit trees on them in a fan shape. The bed on the left with the large net on it is used for growing cabbages. We have five veg beds which are grown on rotation and the cabbages here are covered because the pigeons have taken rather a fancy to them. One of our newer fruit trees is this one here, which is an almond. And you'll see we've actually already got two almonds growing nicely. Potatoes are in the bed to the left. And as we walk forwards, you'll see there's asparagus and other soft fruits in this bed. The plant immediately on the right is a tabery. And this on the left is one of our five grapevines. This is the tabery with horseradish beneath it, blueberries, gooseberries, red currants, black currants, all further beyond that. These are raspberries. On the left, we're looking at now the summer fruiting raspberries, Glen Moy. And on the right is an autumn fruited variety that produces yellow fruit called All Gold. What you can't hear on the video is the buzzing that these bushes are producing, which is from the hundreds of bumblebees that seem to adorn the plant. Alpine strawberries grow on the left beneath the raspberries and a large rhubarb patch on the right. And that is just about it. And you can see our house in the distance there so it really is just an ordinary terraced house with a large quarter acre garden.